Hello guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. Now if you remember last time we unlocked a bunch of these texts that would be good for designing a satellite and that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get a satellite slash space station, we can orbit Kerbin and we can go up and dock with it. So that's the plan, we're going to engineer one of those right now. So switching up to double speed, so a bit more than that. So we're not sitting here forever. One of the things we unlocked was electricity. So I've got some circular batteries in there that are going to store some electricity. We unlocked these wider fuel tanks. Actually, we had those at the start of the episode. They're not even really that new. I'm going to put a hitchhiker storage unit unit as our center so that we don't have to have kerbals but we've got room for them if need be and of course I'm going to add on some solar panels so that we can get some electricity to store in those batteries and some light so we can actually see what we are doing when we're trying to dock because I want docking ports all over this thing I want to be able to fit absolutely everything that I can on it and I'm not going to put any science equipment on this, but I am going to put transmitting equipment so if anything's docked and can't get back for whatever reason, we can still transmit anything it had back down here. And I'm going to put on some RCS because that is a necessity for docking so you can do micro adjustments while you're going along. So then I just want to repeat that top section on the bottom, but unfortunately game does not want to do that so I have to do it in multiple stages of redoing fins and flipping them one way then another until eventually it all goes back together and we have a symmetrical through the horizontal space station so I'm saving that and I'm also going to add it in to the sub assemblies which you can see me doing now so that's going to be our base design for our first batch of space stations that we're going to be putting up. And as well as this, I also wanted to design a launch stage. So you can see me doing that now. This is going to be the stage that would get us up into orbit around Kerbin for us to then start doing whatever manoeuvre it is that we have planned. So it's going to involve seven of these three high or six high, depending on how you look at it, fuel tank fins. And rather than using six times symmetry, I'm using two times symmetry and repeating it so that I don't have to drop everything at once. So what I'm going to do, actually I shouldn't have got rid of those engines, I have to put them back on. There we go. But the basic plan here is that one fuel tank will run out all its fuel while also filling the one to the right of it and that one will do the same and the one to the the third one in this line will fill into the center which means all the tanks will stay completely full apart from the first one which will run out and then drop but then the second one run out and drop so it's basically a more efficient way to use our fuel so we're not going to be carrying all the mass of the containers of these fuels with us so and to keep the whole thing symmetrical while fins are being dropped off the whole thing is repeated sort of two sets of three so the the center of thrust stays in line with the center of the craft so that's the the concept behind this idea you can see me using struts to make sure it doesn't all fall apart on us and also adding in some solid boosters just to help us lift off that ground before we've burnt off some of our, some of that liquid fuel mass. And then I'm going around and adding in nose cones just for that extra little bit of aerodynamics. Don't have any nose cones that are the big size, so I just stick small ones on there. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, really? And go around strutting everything together. Struts are amazing in this game. They're literally the most important thing to make sure that everything doesn't just fall apart and explode. And also adding in some adding in some of those, I'm not even sure what they're called, sort of landing strut fins that help you not fall over on the launch pad like our very first mission that we never speak of, never speak of all those explosions. Anyway, after sorting out the um, staging so that it drops stages at the right time, our launch stage is complete and I can put that into a sub-assembly as well, meaning we don't have to rebuild it each time, we can just pull and drag it in 
which is a very nice, it's such a good feature they added, it makes building and engineering things so, so much easier. So I'm going to put back on that space station that we had, and because this is only going to orbit, we're not going to go any further, we can just stick on the launch stage straight on the bottom, and we don't really have to worry about anything else like putting on a transition stage or anything like that. So we're putting that in, checking that everything's still in the right stage because some of the sub-assembly stages end up integrating into each other, which isn't quite what I want, so fixing that. And we have, well actually, we have a very, very unstable craft. So we have this massive, powerful engine at the bottom connected to those tiny, tiny batteries, which is not very stable at all. So I'm adding in a ton of struts to desperately try and keep this fin from just ripping itself apart while we are getting ourselves into orbit. So once I have done that, we are ready to launch. So that's where it gets exciting. So, massive explosion, <laughs> revert flight, never happened. Don't know why it happened, you guys did not see that. Probably should have cut that really. And then I forget to put on SAS and we drift all the way over here and we've got a crazy horizontal velocity. So, third time's the charm, remember SAS, don't explode randomly for no reason, and we actually lift off straight up, which is not really that spectacular, it's what really should have happened the first time, but you never expect anything to go that well in a show like mine. So, dropping the solid fuel boosters as soon as we can, and raising the throttle to full, so that we're getting the most efficient burn of this liquid fuel. Dropping the first set of two and um columns once they've run out of fuel so the second two columns start to burn they run out fairly slower compared to it because rather than feeding uh, one column's fuel into four tanks and four engines only has to do it into three so it goes down by a significant factor slower which is how this rocket gets more and more efficient the longer we go up so drop those, we're down to just three engines now, but we're getting quite a good altitude here, so I start my gravity turn. We're a bit slow, but that's part of the problem of having such a heavy, large amount of fuel without the later engines that you unlock that give us that better ISP, but since we don't have any of those, there's nothing we can really do about that. And burning up now, it's about time that I should be turning into a more 45 degree burn, I think, as my apoapsis is getting higher. But actually, if we look at our velocity vector on the nav ball, we can see that it's already about there, just because of the weight of this craft, so I didn't actually have to worry about it. Which, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, really. Not sure. Anyway, starting our horizontal burn to get into orbit, dropping down to our final engine. This is the most efficient stage as the column only is feeding into one engine, so it will last by far the longest. So, even though it looks like we've dropped a lot of fuel, we've actually still got plenty of time. We've got more than enough fuel, really. Which is a good thing, because it means we have leftover fins. And isn't that nice? You can see the moon over there. It's always nice. And actually, I'm just having a look around at where everything is in relation to our sky, because really, there's not much to talk about here. We're just burning and circulizing our orbit, as we always do. I raise up to get my apoapsis back to where I am, and as we circulize, you'll see the apoapsis and periapsis flip sides. That means we're pretty much circular, and we're in a good way for fuel as well. We've got more than enough. So I burn up to get a bit higher, because 50,000 kilometer, no, 50,000 meters even, is nothing. That is not a stable orbit. It's too low in the atmosphere which means you would get friction and reduce speed and eventually plummet back down to the planet, which isn't good. So we want to be somewhere between 80 and 100,000 metres, really, if we can. So I'm playing around to see also how I can get this to run nicely around the equator. And I do that by setting the moon as a target and looking at the ascending and descending nodes and then burning either north or south, I believe it's south in this case, I can't really remember, um, so that our 
velocity isn't changing through our orbit and it will just change the angle that we're going at. And I do that by burning as close to the node as possible until they flip, which again means that we are straight and in line. So this is a very nice orbit now, um, looking at it sort of from an angle point of view. Now we just need to get the height right. So drifting up to our apoapsis, it's time to burn prograde and get that periapsis up. As we see those flip, they are both about 80,000, which is a very good orbiting height for this low satellite because this wants to be the thing that we can put fins up into orbit and then refuel them. It's not necessarily going anywhere important. Now, you can see there that little bit of the launch stage just floating around. I do not have any circular... Um, What's the word? I've forgotten the word. Remote control control fins, I can't remember. Having a mind blank. I don't have any of those, so I can't stick any into the launch stage. So it just has to drift around, which is a bit of a shame. So I do one lap of curbing to get it a bit further away. And there we have it. Our first satellite in orbit. That's not too bad, is it? And this means we can launch fins up that would have not enough fuel to get places. And then we can refuel them and stretch out our space program into deeper space, which is what we always want. Deeper, more exciting stuff. So I also extend out all these communication devices, just because I think they look quite nice, really. And at the minute, really, I'm just playing around trying to get a nice thumbnail. But yes, I end up going back to the tracking station and just deleting that bit of space debris that is floating around because oh there it is look on the left because that would just orbit and maybe crash into stuff and cause all sorts of problems and until we have remote guidance units there's nothing we can really do to deorbit that which is a shame I guess I could put engines on this fin but that would then get in the way of all the other stuff and I think it looks quite nice the way it is very nicely engineered satellite good job so, going back to the VAB, I thought there's still time in this episode, and we had a lot of fuel left over on that launch stage. So why don't we also put a satellite on the moon? I think that's a good idea, don't you guys? So, I warp, time warp around until we get into a good launch position. There we go, the moon just coming up over the horizon, that's what we're looking for. And we boost up, I managed to do it first time this time, getting better guys. And I'm going to do a fade cut here because I do literally the exact same mission I just did up until this point when I was in orbit and I continue to burn to get ourselves an encounter with the moon. And you can see it's going quite slowly here because we've still got a fairly fuel, uh, fuel, fuel column. And as we burn through that fuel, and also as we get further out, our delta V is increasing much, much quicker. And we go round, and actually I miss the encounter. So I figure out I have to burn pretty much directly up on the nav ball to get the most efficient encounter that will get us into a kind of orbit. I try playing around to see if there's anything better I can do, but I can't figure one out, so I decide... Just to go straight for that, burning directly up on the nav ball. In fact, I cancel the maneuver node because I don't really need it. It's just a single direction. It's very easy to do without it. So, burning and there's an encounter. That'll do. So, time warping up until we shoot past it, slow down and see the moon shoot into and we get into its sphere of influence. Oh, that's a hard thing to say. <laughs> I need to practice that one. Anyway, burn in retrograde to reduce our velocity and get ourselves into a nice orbit around the moon. Again, boosting round, and this isn't very circular, so I lower the periapsis to a decent height. It's quite a lot higher than the other one, but anything coming into the moon would also be higher, so it doesn't make too much of a difference. It seems like a waste getting it any lower. So again, warp to the periapsis, burn retrograde until we're fairly circular. And I think, you know what, that'll do. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's not like it doesn't like it's make a difference. I'm going to have to align whatever I bring into the moon with it anyway. So who cares if it's a little bit off dead straight. So 
jettison that launch stage out again into deep space. I can once again set up the satellite. In fact, that's a much more impressive feat. So forget all those other thumbnails I took around Kerbin. I think we should use this one with the Mun. So I'll go and I'll take another one. So I think I'm just trying to get my nav ball to point due north so that while it's orbiting it doesn't change. You see it stays pointing up, it doesn't sort of rotate around, which makes it much easier to dock with. And that's why it's important to do that. So getting round to the sunny side, I think I'm ready to take a thumbnail and pretty much end this video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.